my nature not, I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Today we'll go bird watching, tomorrow we'll catch toads The next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut That's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut, I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Well, hello there, Nature Nuts. Hey, I've got good news for you this time around because we get to go back into the world of insects and spend some time with an insect that is most people's very top absolute favorite insect, the praying mantis. Oh yeah, you gotta like praying mantises. They're big, they're beautiful, they're elegant, snazzy, they're nifty. It's magnificent and sublime. And you know, I think the reason we like them so much is because they remind us of little tiny people. Don't you agree? Not convinced? Well, stick with me. I'll prove it to you. And I'll prove it to this little guy, too. How's it going? Hello. Hi, I'm waving. <laughs> too neat. Glad I'm not a host fly right now. Oh. Mantids are related to cockroaches, although they live very different lifestyles. Well, I hope it's not bothering you that I've been saying mantid instead of mantis. I mean, the words are almost the same, and the fact is they mean the same thing too. Mantis is the common word, or the common name. Mantid is the more scientific name. It's also easier to say mantids than it is to say mantises. Now the rest of the common name, the praying part, that one also causes confusion. Let me read to you from the words of the great French entomologist Jean-Henri Fabre about the origin of the name. A long time ago in the days of ancient Greece, this insect was named Mantis, or the prophet. The peasant saw her on the sun-scorched grass, standing half erect in a very imposing and majestic manner, with her broad green gossamer wings trailing like long veils, and her forelegs like arms raised to the sky, as though in prayer. To the peasant's ignorance, the insect seemed like a priestess or a nun, and so she came to be called the Praying Mantis. And that concludes our reading for the day. As the great American entomologist Ashley B. Gurney once wrote, though, the only thing these things might be praying for is a good square meal, and that's why a lot of people get all mixed up and spell it P-R-E-Y, because they do prey on other insects. So, whatever expression you use, we're all gonna know what you mean. Don't worry about it. Doesn't matter. I think there's just about no doubt that of all the insects, mantids have the coolest heads. And you know, the reason they have cool heads is because they've got good necks. They can turn their head around, they can look wherever they want to look, and they can almost turn their head all the way around to look over their own shoulder. Now they've also got wonderful eyes, great big compound eyes set well apart on a big triangular head, and what that does is it gives them what we call binocular vision. And all that means is they can estimate distance very well, which is very important when you have to sneak up on some wary little fly or something and grab it. It's, uh, you know, if, if you couldn't estimate distance, you might grab too short or grab too far or, you know, you s stumble over your prey when you're trying to sneak up on it. Ah, no good. You have to be, what was that? Oh, don't know. Uh, you have to be able to estimate distance well, and that's why a mantid has the kind of eyes that it does. Of course, you know, we've all heard that mantids don't really need their heads. Get them chewed off and still do things like mate or fly or run or walk. But, you know, to be honest with you, if they're given their druthers, they'd rather keep their heads. They work much better with them than without them. If I was a man, I'd at least carry a spear, but uh, 
I don't think that'd work either. I don't Although mantids can turn their heads, they cannot turn them as far as owls can. Uh, I love watching praying mantises hunting. The strike is so fast and so accurate and they just start eating right away. Ooh, very exciting. Very exciting. I, I don't understand why there aren't thousands of people studying these things, but there aren't. There are very few, and one of them is right here with me. This is Cynthia Mazur. Cynthia, what can you tell me about the, the strike of the praying mantis? Well, what they do is first they get them in their sight. They look at them. They orientate their body toward them. So what happens is the mantid will strike out at it. It can happen in less than a second, even a very small fraction of a second. Do they see their prey, point their body toward it, extend their forelegs, and grasp them with their spines on their forelegs, in essence impaling them so that it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, and they don't even bother killing them before they start eating either, do they? No. That's quite gruesome. Yeah, it is pretty yeah. gruesome. They just go for the meatiest part. Usually the head is first. I guess that's probably good if you had to be eaten alive. You have your brain eaten first so you couldn't think about it. Oh, unbelievable. And we fed this one a uh, winter moth. I got such a kick out of that because the uh, the mantid ate everything. Yeah, they don't leave anything to waste whatsoever. Usually, especially with uh, butterflies and moths, they'll even eat the wings. I don't, it's, you know, it's kind of like eating your hamburger and then eating a napkin, I think. So, is this the... Um, the species you were saying has a very interesting startle display? They do. They do. A lot of mantids, to protect themselves, will make themselves look bigger by holding out their forelegs. Can, can we see that? Can we bring we, her out and do we that? We sure can. Yeah, yeah okay. we can see that. Let's do that now that she's had a good meal. I've got my camera here, too. Let me get my camera. Okay, now how does this work? This is a... What we're going to try to show is a startle display. And one of the defensive mechanisms that mantids use to make themselves look more frightening to predators like birds is to make themselves look bigger. And they also sometimes have colored areas on the insides of their forelegs. So what we're going to try to do here is try to startle her. OK, so. let, me get, let me get ready here. My camera's trying to look really big here, too. Oh, oh, what's she doing there? Yeah, she was trying to bite my hand. Well, isn't that nice? Yeah. Let me get her again. Oh, oh, neat. Neat. Wow. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, see that display? That's great. Four legs up, teal spots, looking larger, more ferocious. What is ferocious? If you were a bird, wouldn't oh, that be scary? Yeah. Whoa, far out. Look at that. Big red jaws. No, that's the color of her mandibles, which Ooh, are bright red. Baby, and that's your four wild. Legs. Do you see those spots? Holy crow. Yeah. Looking large, looking scary. Some mantids have bright patterns on their wings and are even more impressive when they display. All right, well, now let's have some straight talk about what exactly happens when mantids mate. We've all heard the stories. Females who reach back, grab the male by the neck, devour his head, kill him, eat him. And yeah, it's true, it's, it's not common, but it does happen. Now, it doesn't have to happen. If you're a female mantid, I want you to make sure to have a nice big meal before you go out on your next date. If you're a male, don't be cheap. Take her out for dinner. Let her have anything and everything she wants. And if you do find yourself being devoured, don't feel too bad. I mean, the nutrients in your body will go toward the production of eggs that will become your children and the, the future of the next generation. The sacrifice will not be in vain. Did you know that there are eight families of mantids on Earth today? And one of them is called the flower mantid family, the Hymenopodidae. And these two 
mantids here are in that family. In fact, they're the, uh, they are one and the same species, the orchid mantis. Let's look at this one first. This is a young orchid mantis. You can see it's a beautiful pink and white creature with a little flush of green on the back of the pronotum. A uh, little bit of a mauve tinge to the eyes, horned eyes. Very interesting. Most things don't have horns uh, that are actually part of their eyes. And the abdomen, the top of the abdomen, actually does look like the lip of a flower, doesn't it? This is an adult, and she is quite a bit bigger. She's got wings. She could fly and might very well fly if I bother her too much. But you can see that uh, she's not quite as flowery looking, but still a lot more flowery looking than your average praying mantis. What a perfect way to make a living. You look like a flower, you sit around in flowery places, and if I were a little bee or a little butterfly or a hungry little hoverfly, I would come to this flower in search of nectar, and in a flash, I would be pierced by a couple dozen spines and have my head chewed off. Mantis doesn't have to go anywhere. Doesn't even have to smell like a flower, I don't think. No odor whatsoever. They're extraordinarily clean. How are you doing? Bud? I just love these things. Want to come over here? Want to bite my finger? No. Just wants to sit there and look like a flower. And who wouldn't if you had legs like that? Other species of flower mantids can be green or brown with small pink flecks on them. Now, did you know that the movements of the praying mantis have also been the inspiration for a style of martial art called the Seven Star Praying Mantis Style? I'm here with Sifu Stan Lee and his son Brendan, and uh, Stan has studied this style for many years. Brendan is uh, is also tremendously adept at it. What do you, can, tell me about the origin of it. Where did the idea come from? Well, the the idea was invented the grandmaster of Wang Long. Um, he was studying martial art for many many years, but firstly he wanted to find out how good he is. So he went to the Sulam temple to challenge the Sulam monks. Sulam temple always had a good name because they, they're the best. But every time he fight, he lost. So one day he went to the mountain, but he ran into a praying mantis. See the praying mantis was fighting with something. He really took the praying mantis home and uh, pray with the chopstick the praying mantis to see how to fight. This is how he studied them. So he studied them for a little while. Then he went back to the Salem Temple. All the people he fight before, he beat them. Oh, that this right? is how yes, he yes. invented the style called Seven Star Praying Mantis. So what, what can you tell me about the, the movements and the techniques in this style that, uh, that Brendan's demonstrating? Well, uh, the motion Brandon was doing, you know, is, is uh, imitated by the praying mantis. Mm -hmm. The mantis insect has big spikes on the foreleg and he used to grab the prey. Are there, are a lot, there are a lot of uh, grasping motions mm -hmm. in your style? Yeah. Is it? Well, what they, what they do, you know, you, mm -hmm. somebody, you see the hand coming in, mm -hmm. this is how they grab, this see? Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, okay. Right yeah. there. So I'm, my arm is right? held straight. See, right from yeah. here, see? See? Ah, right, then okay. You're going this way. You're going this way, too. Okay, beautiful. Right down. I would be on the ground, but yeah. I'm not, because this is just a demonstration. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Fine, <laughs> no problem. People who practice Kung Fu do it mostly for the exercise and not to hurt other people. I 
I'm so murderous, she mumbled, or so I'm accused. Maybe I'll turn on a new leaf. Mustering memories of childhood out back, back of, of the shed. shed. With no mother to teach her of manners. Cannibal tendencies Said, making for no need of family planners. Melanie, the murdering mantis, more peaceful at heart than a dog. Melanie, the murdering mantis, spreading her message of love. Mr. Right, 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 right. The one who might be Mr. Right. Melanie, the murdering mantis, more peaceful at heart than a dog. Melanie, the murdering mantis, spreading her message of Like the cow or by Kunia. Nature made me so mean, so magnificently. So here's a nice idea for a centerpiece for your next entomological cocktail party. Why, it's just a dead stick in a vase. At least that's what your guests will think, until those irritating houseflies start swarming around the dessert tray. What can you tell me about this mantis here, Cynthia? Well, this mantid is called a dead leaf mantis. And as you can see, it looks very, very close to this branch. Notice also on the pronotum, they have a little projections on either side. They also have those same leafy projections on each of their legs. Anytime they have any kind of projections like that, it helps them to blend in to their surroundings and it helps them to be hidden so that they can sneak up on prey without being noticed. I'm just going to poke it so that everybody believes me that there's really a mantid here. See, look, there's a mantid. How's it going, buddy? Oftentimes what mantids will do, especially juvenile mantids like this one, will hang upside down with their abdomen curled around their back there. Uh, when they become adults, though, their wings will extend past the tip of their abdomen, and their abdomens will lie flat, so they'll look more straight rather than curved like this young mantis looks right now. Well, I guess there's nothing else to see on this branch. Oh, you missed it, John. <laughs> right there. There's another mantis. Oh, that's unbelievable. Okay, give me the scoop on this one. That one's called a lichen mantid, and doesn't she look like a piece of moss? Could you imagine seeing her if she were actually on a tree trunk with moss? Oh, there's just no way. Unless... It was moving. I don't think I'd ever see it. And if 
you did disturb her by chance, what she would do to defend herself would be to simply to fall to the ground as if she were a leaf. No kidding. Right. Can she I, can I move. bug her a little bit here yeah, just to ahead. see what? Go ahead. There I don't she fall. Is. Very cool. You know, she reminds me of, uh, I can't remember what that comic book was called, where, where this guy, you know, he's a mad scientist and he, uh, he does this horrible experiment that goes wrong and, and then he wanders out into the swamp and he becomes one with the swamp and, and he's half man and half plant and that's why. If, if mantids could write comic books, this is what they'd come up with. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> there is a mantid in South America called the banjo mantid that is shaped like a little green banjo. <laughs> oh, it's definitely time to pack her in. You know, the niftiness of mantids, it just never seems to end. Even at nighttime. Are you ready for a little snooze there, buddy? Put you up there. Even at nighttime, if you keep mantids as pets or if you go out at night with a flashlight, you'll notice that their eyes change color. Just one more cool thing about mantids. What happens is that the pigments move within the eyes and uh, they get a lot darker. And at that point, they can see better in low light. Fantastic. They've been around since, ah, uh, the latter part of the age of dinosaurs, so they've had a long time to work on their niftiness. And hoof, do I ever like niftiness. That's because I'm a nature nut, and I hope you are too. I'll tell you what, come back in about an hour and check out the eyeballs on this critter. Be quiet though, I'm likely to be asleep. See you again soon. Night. Oh, turn off the light. Hey buddy. Sweet dreams of tasty fly eyeballs and stuff. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut. <laughs>